please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Black movie thoughts. You know, if you were trying to remind someone of this film, you could probably use the phrase, that movie where giant aliens are constantly hiding out in people that don't seem big enough to hold these aliens. You know, you have the guy at the beginning, the, you know, the one who explodes into blue goo. I love the line, you know, you guys need to exercise a lot more caution when firing your guns. Especially you! And all the other, you know, I don't know, highway patrolmen, whatever, just look at him with such disdain, like they know, as, as if they know what is being, you know, they just completely accept this explanation, and just, you know, yeah, love it. Anyway, there's that, and then there's the bug, the, the Egger bug, as his wife would have put it, you know. Yeah, I, I have no idea how they managed to fit in there, but I guess Edgar does at least show, so to speak, in all those awkward movements and the like, you know, that he is far too big. To... I love that, you know, we, we spend just a few seconds with the real Edgar, and you just, you don't really feel bad for him, because he's clearly not a nice guy, you know, and just... You know, his last lines echoing the words of, you know, what's his face? The Planet of the Apes, Soil and Greener People, that guy. Charlton Heston, that's it. You know, you can get this gun if you pry it from my cold, dead hands. Proposition is acceptable. And, you know, just grabs him, sucks his skin dry, and puts on the skin is a suit, you know, and just the, the line, what was that, Edgar? Sure. I never seen sure do that. Awesome. I, I love pretty much everything said between the two and in general that, that she says. I don't remember her character name, but just fantastic. How, how she drones on about, you know, the different kinds of drink he could have asked for that are not sugar water, you know, she just drones on for, like, several seconds with no sign of actually stopping, you know. And I really like this small sort of... Linda Fiorentino is actually introduced fairly early on, but then we don't see her for a little while. And it kind of explains something that might otherwise be called a plot hole. Because obviously sometimes dead aliens show up in the morgue. And then what happens? You know, well, it gets flagged. It gets noticed by the MIB. That's, it's what they're there for. They notice stuff like that and take care of it. And Agent K just, you know, passes. Hey, you're that doctor, right? Would you look at this, please? And he goes in and is trying to find out if Jay, you know, first he has Jay, you know, assist in the investigation, and then he's like, you know, maybe this guy is, you know, good enough to be an agent. And we, you know, we have the tests with the West Point grads and, you know, all these different guys. I love the, the look of disapproval from the, you know, Captain America, as Jay refers to him as, you know, with the, the, the sort of, you know, it, again, it's like the, the cops with the, the INS, I suppose that's what they're called, you know, the, the immigration guys, the, just looking at like, oh, dude, you just, you are not living up to what we should be, you know, just, you know, from one black guy to another, you, you, you should be better, you know, stop being so ghetto, you just, you're, you're you know, giving us all a bad name. 
and you know, then he is the one who actually wins. I love this little half joke that I can imagine that there might be people who don't actually pick up on, but Zed, right before he neuralizes them, you know, he, he has this line about, excellent, you know, gentlemen, you are exactly what we've come to expect from, you know, the, the, you know, the people trained by the military and stuff like that, you know, and if you don't really pay attention to, you know, a minute or two later, he's neuralizing them. So what he's saying is, we can't use any of you, it's, and we're, we're used to that. We, we keep getting, you know, West Point grads in here and, you know, people who are, like, top of their class from the, the military and stuff, you're all useless, so, well, we're, we're used to that. Yeah, that's, and, and the, I, I quite like the tests, you know, I, I love Jay's explanation for why he shot the eight-year-old girl, but neither of the aliens, and I, I have a theory, actually, about the, the written exam kind of thing. He's not the only one messing up, you know. The others are, like, accidentally breaking their pencils and poking holes in the paper and stuff. They're not given a good... T I mean, I mean the, the, the good table is far away from them, and, you know, Jay's like, you know, this is stupid, I'm, I'm just gonna move the table. Even though it, you know, he attracts a lot of attention from the others, and he, he's not even like, oh, sorry, or I'm gonna move this table out. Nothing, he's just like, well, you wanna, you know you want to use the table as well? Just, you know, like, offering it up to them. And I think that it might be an ac actually a test of how do they zo solve this problem that, you know, they're having trouble writing. I mean, one thing is, do they get the right questions on the exam? Do they get the right answers right? But you know, how do they solve this situation where they're, you know, they have bad pencils, the the papers to, or they don't have a proper, I don't know, they, they don't have something to write against, you know, so they're poking holes in the paper and stuff like that. And, yeah, or at least if it's not a test of that, I'd say he, you know, Jay certainly, you know, proves himself through that, that, he, you know, he proves that he can think you know, outside of the box. I like all these little things that are just sort of briefly introduced and such. You know, you, you very briefly see Lurch, Carol Streaken. I hope I pronounced that name right. I would rather not have someone that large looking for me. You know, that Jay just spots him, just passing, and, and we just, we hear, you know, the, the lines he says actually do sort of set up the, the Archillian thing, you know, he's just saying, you know, I'm here for diplomatic reasons, duration, lunch, you know, he's, he's going home right after lunch, so, yeah, then, a little later, we see that lunch, you know, and also that... You know, when we find out there's a tiny guy inside the, you know, yeah, the, the, the royalty guy, the Archillian, you know, it's also kind of a hint that, you know, he says, oh, it's diamonds for my children. Obviously, this guy's royalty, you know. But, but yeah, you know, it, the, the bug, the Egger bug, stabs them in, like, the, the neck or maybe a little higher, so... Yeah, you know, that would hit that tiny little man in there, you know. Or actually, heck, maybe it just only, like, winged him, because, you know, he isn't taking up that much space in the head of the suit. The, the, yeah, whatever. I quite like the, the, the flirting between Fiorentino and Smith, you know, that... <laughs> She's just so comfortable with dead bodies. And so, actually, when someone is checking out dead bodies with her, I say, hey, you know, I mean, like, you know, before that, there's that, that cop at the... What's it called? Yeah, you know, at, at the 
who's, who's checking in the, you know, the body and the cat. And, you know, she's like, I hate the living, you know. She gives a nice understated performance. She was perfectly cast in this. You know, she has that kind of snarky, uh, why did I get up this morning kind of vibe to her, you know. So it really fits with her, this, you know, weary and kind of, you know, she, she's not that fond of the living. So, yeah, when she's actually, you know, working on a corpse with someone supposedly on her level and, you know, also in that field and such, she's actually, you know, flirting with him. And, the you know, all those lines back and forth with... You know, I have something I need to show you. I something you need to help me with. And you know, near the end, when when he starts talking about it, I mean, just so you know, excuse me, I need to be in the driver's seat. It's not a natural thing. It's just that's you know, how I roll. And and it cuts to the Edgar bug, who's like, oh, why do I, these people? My, just wow. You know, just. Awesome, and I love the the anger of the bug and the the inferiority complex with it. You know, talking about oh, I'm you know way above you, and then when he starts killing the bugs there at the end, it's actually you know it turns around and you know goes to to kill him because you know even though it actually it's it's like one of the relatively few really stupid things that the Edgar bug does. You know, I mean, you, you can tell. It, it does have a short temper. It does not, you know... It, it's actually, that's the third time a, a human being is killing its family, you know. It got the, the bug zapper guy who enables it to, you know, drive around with its spacecraft. You know, you got the, the coroner guy, the David Cross character. And then you have Will Smith, you know, so... And those are really the only times, other than that, it's very methodical, you know, it's not subtle, but it's it's a bug, and it's wearing a suit that's a size or two too small, you know, so, yeah, but it actually, it gets the job done, basically, you know, and that's actually also, it does have this nice, it's it's very consistent about being kind of brutal, you know, I'm I'm not sure I'd really go as far as saying dumb. It's it's an it's a good villain, you know, but yeah, when it's trying to get it, it thinks the galaxy is in that little, you know, thingamajig, you know, the with the the diamonds for the Archelian royalty's children, you know, and we already know, but he didn't hear that. The bug didn't hear that line. So, you know, it's, you know, it spends hours, apparently, just, excuse me, trying to open it, and, excuse me, and how does it try to open it? Just by smashing it into the wall and, you know, pulling it, trying to pull it apart and stuff like that, you know. I mean, I didn't get a good look at it, so I don't know exactly how you really are supposed to open it, but yeah, the bug does not appear to have motor skills, you know, at least not with human fingers, anyway. Now, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it's actually right on the way into the second spaceship, and it might have gotten away in time, but then, you know, Jay starts killing its family, and the whole thing, I love how badass the agents are sometimes, you know, that he's just standing right in front of it, it's staring him right in the face, it's two times his size, at least, and he's like, you best get out of my face before something bad happens to you. And you hear the gun charging. Too late. You know, it's awesome. And they just shoot down the thing. I mean, you've got Jay. He's, like, looking a little at Kay, like, is, is this seriously happening? Should we move? But Kay's just completely badass, just standing completely still. And even Jay's quite badass, you know. But, yeah. And I like how, you know, the, the film does good job of setting stuff up and you know, following up on it. We have, the, you know, the World's Fair stuff, and yeah, there are two UFOs there, and yeah, it, you know, because they're, they're talking about, you know, Zed and K are talking about how, you know, oh, well, all the spaceships out of, you know, 
out of Earth have already left. You know, so... And, and also, you know, the bug, if it had actually been stupid, it might have tried breaking into MIB or something with how, you know, it actually... You know, because they did have its spaceship, but it might have... It probably, it almost definitely wasn't able to break into MIB, and it, you know, it, it, even if it had, it might have taken it a long time to get to the spaceship, so instead it gets to, you know, the other. I quite like how the film really hammers home that Earth is not the be-all, end-all, that... Just, you know, you, you start out with, the, you know, this opening sequence with all the, the opening title sequence with all the stars and stuff, and you have this alien looking thing, and suddenly it's just a bug on a windshield. You know, you were thinking this is going to be, like, important, and, ooh, look at that nasty, you know, alien thing, and suddenly it's just a bug on a windshield. And, you know, the ending sequence, right before the, before the ending credits, it's just brilliantly done, you know, the... It's just... You know, it, it keeps zooming out, and suddenly, it's just two marbles in, you know, and, and it's this big, unseen creature, you only see his hand, playing marbles, and, okay, well, I won that one, so it takes... and plops them into the bag full of marbles. And it's just brilliant, you know, just really really hammers home the, yeah, again, the you know, perspective and the galaxies and Orion's belt, all that stuff, you know. And also, again, the bug is not stupid, you know, it sees the, you know, the dangly thing by the end of the, you know, and, yeah, it's it's an alien that doesn't know English that well. It's, it's you know, dying there, and it's going like, what is that word? B belt? Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Belt. You know, it's it's not collar, it, it, which is what you know a native English speaker would have used. And you no, know, it's a, a, a belt. Sure. You know that that it's it's you know material that goes around part of your body, and it's like you know, yeah, it's it's a belt. It's, sure. And and also just the the strangeness of that quality. I mean, we've seen plenty of scenes in Hollywood movies where someone, someone's dying words are important, and, you know, there, there's a revelation, but it actually, it, it has trouble saying the thing, and not only because it's dying, but it's like, oh, what is that word? You know, that's, that's really excellent. You know, they just really play with that stuff. Also, how you have you know, you have a pregnancy scene, you have a, a, a birth scene in a movie. It's, it's Plenty of movies have that, you know, but eh, it's, it's a squid. Congratulations. It's a squid. You know, it's awesome. And it's just, he's standing there, like, looking in the window. And also just the, the start of that scene where they're like, you know, here, license registration. Okay, here. Your other license wrench. Reg, you're not supposed to leave town. What are you doing? Well, it's my wife. Well, look at her. And the camera moves back and it's like, there's a pregnant woman there. Her legs are apart. Did you not notice that before? You know, neither Jay nor Kay. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. And, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, he can deal with that. Don't worry, he does it all the time, you know. And he's like, oh, okay. And, and he's trying to do the Lamaze thing or what, you know, whatever that's called. And suddenly, yeah, and, and he's saying, I see something, you know, this, this is not human, and out comes this, you know, octopus arm thing, and just, he goes all the way through the car, out the other side, and it's just the whole thing. And it does look cute, you know, it is a cute-looking squid baby, you know. And then suddenly it's throwing up on him, and, and it's just this... Gag, again, we've seen that in a million films, you know, a, a, an infant, you know, with a, with a bodily function joke, you know, but, but suddenly it's just, 
It's the fact that it's an alien that's doing it. I, I can't think of any other movie where I'd even imagine seeing an alien, <laughs> you know, what, what is it they say about dogs? It thinks it's people, you know, it's, it's just behaving in a very human sort of way, you know. I can't get enough. I, I love the, the, the twins, the, the names, you know, McGlug and Bob. And just the, yeah. <laughs> In general, the, the aliens, you know, gotta love Frank the Pug as well. I really hope they didn't actually, that dog didn't look that happy. You know, I hope it was like a fake dog at least some of the time. Man. You know, and... Yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers the entire movie, everything I had to say. I like how, you know, over the course of the film, sort of... Oh, I gotta talk about the book ending. I like how over the course of the film, Jay affects K, you know, when when they're standing at the, the farmer wife thing, you know, and he's talking about, you know, oh, you, it wasn't really a UFO and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Jay is like, oh, you, you fried her memory and now you can give her a new one and that's what you come up with? You know, okay, look, you left, you know, you kicked him out. He didn't appreciate you and you, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get real pretty and you're going to get a decorator in here. You know, all this stuff. And, and Kay's just like, I can't believe I'm hearing this, you know. And, and just this, I think he even walks off, you know. He's like, no, just no. And he walks off. Yeah, brilliant. And then, you know, with Linda Fiorentino, it's like, you know, there's a, you know, corner in there, she needs a memory. And Jay's just looking at him and he's, make it up happy memory, you know, and the guy is not even asking questions, he's, he just proceeds. Because he's, he's heard weirder, you know, he's, this is not the strangest thing he's expected that day, you know. It's just, okay, whatever, you're my boss, I'm just gonna, yeah, you know, or, or maybe he's not even gonna go in there and give her a happy memory, maybe he's just, yeah, you, you know what, whatever, I'm, Let's not and say we did. Then, but yes, the, the book ending, you know, it starts with, you know, you, you have these two elderly agents, you know, and but, but yeah, and you have, I guess, actually, I guess the, the other agent, I do not remember, D, I think it was D. Agent D, I guess he was one of the guys who was already an agent before, you know, when, when they made contact, because, you know, he is older than K. Anyway, yeah. And, and, you know, he, he like looks up at the star and we never just look at them anymore. I just, and, you know, he's, it's not that he doesn't want to, but like he said, you know, the mind is willing, the body is just not, you know, just can't keep up anymore. And, yeah, he's just, it's, it's a retirement. And, yeah, and it really does, you know, hammer, it, it establishes very nicely that it's a very lonely job that they have. And... Yeah, then by the end of it, we have this, you know, and, and then, I don't know, halfway through the film or something, we got Kay looking at his, you know, yeah, the, the woman he was in love with, and he, he misses her, you know, and, and I love the, you know, <laughs> he's, he's, I love his body language right after Jay Cat, you know, catches him in it, you know, he's like, oh, no, well, this needs filing, and this gets put away here, and, you know, he, and, and Jay starts talking, oh, well, they say it's better to have loved than lost, and Kay is just like, I'm not hearing this, try it, you know, and, and then, you know, there's, there's this, like, second of tension, and then Zed calls them over, you know, 
But but yeah, so you know, you've established he you know, he also is lonely. And then by the end of it, yeah, you have uh, you know, I haven't been training a partner, I've been training a replacement. Here's the the flashy thing, and you know, this is how you use it. And yeah, you know, and, and he gets to go back to his wife. You know, it's it's a truly beautiful ending to his his character. It was it was a perfect way to end that. You know, it it's again he's he's retiring and it doesn't mean that you know that that things won't still be taken care of because he did. He taught Jay a ton, you know, and yeah, you know, they they will be able to take care of things without him and you know, even though this is such a, it's it's a lonely job and it's it's a job that really takes it out of you. You know, it it can happen that you get to go back. You know, you just don't remember what you did, kind of thing. And the the thing about you know how he woke up from a, you know thirty five year coma or something like that. You know, and then Linda Fiorentino's an agent and. Yeah, it would have, I would have liked to see, excuse me, their dynamic, you know, and, yeah, instead of what did happen, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.